from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of OutSystems Next Step 2020, brought to you by OutSystems. Welcome back. I'm Stu Miniman, and this is the Cube's coverage of OutSystems Next Step. Always love when we get to come to the conferences to be able to talk to the practitioners, understand what they're doing, give some recommendations that they have for their peers. So happy to welcome to the program first time guest, Mikhail Strusiewicz. He's the Global Vice President of Information Technology at Collier's International, coming to us from Vancouver. Mikhail, thank you so much for joining us. Joe, thank you for having me. Great to be here. All right, if you could just set up for us, first of all, uh, you know, Collier's, if, you know, how should people be thinking about Collier's uh, in 2020? And just a, a little bit briefly about, you know, your role there. Okay, so uh, Collier's International, it's a leading commercial real estate firm. We're in 69, uh, sorry, 68 countries. We have over 18,000 professionals around the globe. Uh, my role is to coordinate the information technology Globally, uh, we are a very much uh, distributed, decentralized organization. So we have technology groups all around the globe. And uh, my role uh, is, is pretty much to, to set a direction and, and to make sure that we, we, we following on, on that direction uh, appropriately. All right, so, so the, the theme we hear at the show, it's about building it. Uh, you hear from OutSystems, build it fast, build it right, build it for the future. Uh, lots of discussion in the industry about how you need to modernize, and a lot of that is building new applications. So if you could, you know, how does that application portfolio modernization fit in your environment? What are some of the business things that are driving you uh, to build new applications? Well, you know, Thank you for asking me what are the things that are driving, because that, that's one of the themes that I am keep bringing up, that you have to start with, with that. You have to start with why. Why do you even build applications? So what's happening in, in my mind, or at least I, I can tell these days, is that the, the environment, the business environment, not necessarily the technology environment, but the business environment is changing, and it's changing very fast. And we need to adapt to that. We need to adapt to new ways of engaging with the clients, for example, or to providing a service or to, you know, sometimes we, we just call it and say we digitize and, and that's the whole, uh, you know, digital transformation story there. But, but that's the reason why you need applications because applications are uh, end of the day, what makes us more efficient in what are we doing? That's where the machine interacts with, with humans, right? Behind that, you have the infrastructure and all that stuff that nobody sees. But what you see is it's that application in your phone, it's the application that makes you better, makes you more efficient uh, on the time. That's why it's very important to be able to do it. And uh, if you're just gonna buy everything, uh, you're not gonna derive any competitive advantage out of it. You're just gonna you know, use what's available. So more and more these days, we, we recognize that the ability to create something specific for the industry or for the organization, it's extremely important. So I think that's where the ability to build this application fits for us as well. All right, well, you know, we, we, we've seen in general that that digitization is something that's happened for a lot of years. I have to imagine 2020 has had some specific impacts uh, 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 on the marketplace, um, you know, everybody uh, that's interested in real estate, there was probably a brief pause, but now things need to be more online. You mentioned mobile, um, you know, I, I would think that being able to react fast is something that has been driving your activity. Um, take us inside that and, you know, how, how has 2020 uh, impacted uh, your activity specifically? Well, uh... <laughs> 2020 has uh, really put, uh, you know, something which is always in my mind to the test. And what's in my mind is, you know, the business agility that I'm talking about many, many times. Um, it's not necessarily that 2020 has first tested, or in the first half of 2020, I don't think that the ability to create application was tested immediately. Uh, first of all, it was tested the ability to work in a different environment, work from home or work from somewhere else where you are not, you know, in uh, exposed to to the uh, COVID nineteen uh, uh, pandemic. 
so, so that was the first part that was, uh, was tested. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely proud of our organization uh, that for us, that was not too much of an issue. I mean, our, uh, our system has, has uh, uh, you know, helped us uh, do that transition very quick and very smooth. Uh, as we are moving through 2020, now we start to uh, get, uh, get our footing again. And, you know, people are referring to this as we figure out what the new normal is. And as we figure out what the new normal is, we start shifting again back to the application. So how are we going to do things in the new normal? Uh, what is becoming more important now than it was before, right? It's all of the sudden my ability to uh, capture uh, infrared uh, thermal cameras has, has become a priority. And I'm not saying that it necessarily has, but it's just as an example, thing that I haven't thought about necessarily uh, before. Now, I need to switch very fast into that. My ability to track, my ability to, you know, uh, uh, let people in the office in a, in a certain way to, to figure out how many people are in the office, what's the density. Those things before COVID they were kind of, well, that's very interesting. Yeah, we kind of have lots of office. We can cram lots of people in there. No worries about that. Well, that's gone. So all of a sudden, those technologies that were called, you know, uh, emerging are becoming very fast mainstream. So our ability to incorporate them, it's, it, it's critical. Wonderful. Now, now that we've laid out some of, uh, you know, the business drivers and, and, and some of the urgent needs that you have, help us connect the dots uh, to your usage of OutSystems. Maybe if you could take us back to how long you've been using it uh, and, and what that's enabled for your business. Right. Uh, we, I think we adopted OutSystems about three years ago. And we, we didn't necessarily take the, the most successful pattern. So the most successful pattern seems to be you're taking a low code platform, out systems in this case, and you start with something small and you grow from there. We actually had a mission critical system in our hands, which was obsolete, was a legacy, was a, was a time bomb of technical debt. And, um, and we knew we need to change this, but we didn't want to do it in a traditional way. We didn't want to create another monolithical application, another stovepipe. Um, so, so, so that's when we looked for something that we call the digital platform. Uh, and, and that's how we got to, to our systems and, and we adopted it for that particular uh, systems. Now, the byproduct, of course, we delivered on that and it's fantastic and it's great and we had lots of experience and I can tell you how, what to do and what not to do and how I would do different. Uh, but uh, um, it, the, the byproduct of that is that created what we were really after strategically, created that capability to do things very fast, right? And it's not only you're doing it fast, but your chances to do it fast and well has increased dramatically. You know, from the perspective that chances are that you're going to be on brand, which it's a struggle. Let me tell you that with the developers don't really care about the colors uh, and, uh, and, and that it's, you know, it's following your security patterns and wh wh whatever it is in there. All these have, have increased dramatically by putting, uh, uh, putting it in this platform. So when you say uh, do it fast and do it well, do, do you have metrics internally as to how you measure that? Is it, you know, cycle time, time to market, uh, you know, some, you know, percentage of quality of code? Uh, how do you kind of measure that it is demonstrably better today, faster today, more agile today uh, than what you were doing before? So first of all, those are KPIs that a non-technical organization probably has not have in the past. Okay, so, th so this is something that, you know, Microsoft will measure or Intuit will measure and stuff like that, which is just the background because it's interesting. Now we start measuring, but for us, it's very simple. So how many new applications did we develop in the last, I don't know, 10 years? Uh, zero. <laughs> okay, we, we had a moment 10 years ago, we developed a lot of things and and, and then we will keep going and going, and that's how they, they, they get legacy. How many did we develop in the last 18 months? Well, about 19, I think. Keep growing. 
So I think we just start to learn what the KPI should be because I, I, I really I don't know is 19 good it's 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 too much maybe it should be should be only eight uh, so so we learn uh, on on these KPIs one one KPI though or one measurement is not a KPI because I didn't really make it a KPI yet but it's a a measurement in the past an application was built and then you know sporadically there were efforts to bring it up to date and the the business behavior uh, we, uh, as relates to that was very specific they they try to cram everything during the project time because the chances that that thing will ever be reviewed in the next couple of years were close to zero well let me tell you how the new application that we created the, the core one that mission critical it's on a release cycle, a weekly release cycle. This is unheard for our organization. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you that in my 25 years of managing applications and IT uh, in various industries, non-technical industry, that, that, that's, that's critical, I will never achieved with anything that kind of pace. So, do I have clear KPIs to tell you this is way better? No, but I can tell you that there are a whole bunch of things that are emerging and we will start measuring in, in, in the future that are clear indication that we are in a better spot than we used to be. Well, well, well right. It's the measurements that are important to your business that matters. You know, obviously clear, you've unlocked new capabilities that you didn't have. Before it was zero applications. Uh, and now, as you said, you know the why, you're delivering value to the business. Uh, you understand what it takes to do that, and you know that that general discussion of like, well, everybody's becoming a software business. I think you've laid out some of that, at least in, in, in where you are right now. Um, you know why that's important for your business. So uh, you mentioned uh, there's some things you've learned along the way. I'd love to hear you know your journey of three years, looking back, uh, certain best practices you've seen out there. Share a little bit of that wisdom that you've gained. Uh, you know, what would you recommend peers uh, that are starting down this journey or maybe need to take a new look at uh, how they look at their software development? What, what, what would you share with them? Yes, uh, we learned quite a bit. Um, the fact that you get the tool in place, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really, really not, not enough to, to see the benefit. Uh, we, we, we grossly underestimated the, the resistance to change inside of IT. Um, so, you know, if I, I, I would give somebody an advice, I would say, well, if you are in a, in, a, in a typical North American organization where, you know, people matters and what they think and what they do matters, and you can't just be, a, you know, some kind of a, uh, dictatorial uh, <laughs> leader, uh, then, then, then you have to give yourself time because people need to, to understand the benefits of, of, of the platform. The low code is not something that is necessarily uh, immediately embraced by uh, even the, the, the brightest developers. And, and, and unfortunately, we, we've seen great people, uh, um, you know, leaving us eventually because they, they simply didn't, uh, didn't buy in the concept. So, you, you know, to anybody who starts this journey, I would say do not underestimate the psychological change that needs to happen in order to become efficient uh, at, uh, at this. Uh, then it's another interesting one. There are many, but, you know, the, those two I think are, are interesting. You're gonna be for the first time probably way faster than the business uh, respond, and this is something that again I haven't seen in 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 the past in my career, where, you know, you, you're developing things and you have a question, you come something and and you ask the business, so how should this be? It's you know it's left or it's right, and 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 the question is straightforward, and and the business is scratching their head and it's like, well, I, this is not a simple answer. I I Really, I don't know. I need to think about it, and uh, and the business may think a couple of days, uh, uh, and in that time you, uh, you you're not coding if you didn't plan properly. So so you are so fast 
that if you are not managing your pipeline and you are not accounting for the fact that the business won't be able to keep up with you and will need to have time to think about certain uh, things, you're going to have a whole bunch of, uh, of dead times. Now, you can fill them with all kinds of things. You can pay technical debt that you build in your previous agile cycles. There's a whole bunch of things to do, but you need to account for that. And, and as I said, I never seen it before. And I, I always, IT was trying to catch up to the business. It was for the first time that I actually see this thing reversed. And it's uncomfortable. It's, it's, uh, it, I, I saw this becoming uncomfortable actually for the business. It was you know, perceived that, oh, you're putting a lot of pressure on me right now. Well, yeah, but you know what? If you want me to be fast, you need to respond fast. So it's kind of dynamic that is changing in a very interesting way. Eventually, uh, I, I would say, and it doesn't take a long time, but eventually everybody is generally happier. I was just talking the other day with, uh, uh, you know, our VP of, uh, of North American Accounting, who's one of the stakeholders on this product. And, and she said, wow, yeah, this is, this is so much uh, better than anything we, uh, we did before from, from an experience perspective, not necessarily from a, you know, feature by feature, which is also extremely uh, different and, and much better. But yes, two things, psychology of the developer and the velocity that the business can provide when you are developing on this high uh, productivity platform. It's something you need to keep in mind. Well, it makes me it makes me, it makes me laugh a little bit. I, I, I think back to in the early days of cloud computing rolling out, there was that discussion that you know maybe IT won't matter anymore. It will just become a utility. Um, and the discussion, you know, most CIOs that I talk to, uh, pe people in IT, is that IT needs to be responsive to the business and actually can reach a point where it is a major driver for that business. And so that that agility, that speed that you talk about. Um, it is helping to you know, really bring things together uh, and, and help have, you, know, you need to have that common vision. Um, great, w want to give you a final word. You, you've worked with OutSystems a number of years. We're watching them as they uh, you know, keep enhancing their products, see more machine learning and AI baked into it. Uh, for, for those coming, uh, you know, watching uh, the, the Next Step show, um, you know, what, what final words would you give them uh, from, uh, from this event? Oh, I wasn't prepared for that. You know, I, I guess keep up the good work would be the 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 the, the thing. We we made a big bet on uh, on on out systems. We we want to see them growing. We want to see the community of uh, low code developers uh, growing. I want to. I don't, I don't know if I want to tell out system, but I want to tell the co development community: you still need to be a great developer to be able to deliver great applications in low code. It doesn't diminish anybody's value in, in, the, in the market. It's just a different way who's going to make the developer community more productive. It's, we are automating our own tools. That's a normal uh, way to go. And I think OutSystem is doing a fantastic job uh, at that. And I, I'm looking forward to, to see it growing. I think the next iteration I'm, uh, of this, I, I, I want to see a little bit more of the, you know, in, in our case, I, I, I hope to see a little bit more of the citizen developer uh, uh, coming, uh, coming out, and uh, and continue to enhance this uh, this uh, agility, this, this this flexibility, the ability to create. End of the day, you know, it's it's all about competitive advantage for the organization we're in. It's I can paraphrase you and say IT really doesn't matter, but creating value out of the technology, it's it's really what matters, and and that's everybody should keep their eyes on that. Well, Mikhail, I really appreciate you sharing your perspective. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. And stay tuned for more coverage from OutSystems, Next Step, I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE.